Good morning, everybody, and welcome once again to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports right here on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network. And I learned something during the 9 o'clock show that Andrea has no trust in Christian Yelich. You know, Andrea, I'm almost there with you. I had Christian Yelich on my fantasy team in 2020, drafted him number two overall in my draft, and he just was horrible. Never came out of his funk. You'd have, really now, come on, they played 60 games. That's more than a third of a regular season. And you can blame it on this and blame it on that, but there were some players who had really good seasons this year. Christian Yelich, not one of them. And I think he's better than a 200 hitter, but I don't know. I mean, do you think he's really going to come back to be 2019 Wonder Boy? Or is he somewhere between the Wonder Boy and the Ordinary Boy? Good morning, everybody. Bigelow on the prowl in the chat room. Corona Cyclonus, Chris Gallo, DK Loosh, Doug Boyle, Jack Youngblood. Good morning. Lawrence of Warwick, Lenny, Malpal, Sonny D, Taco, Zelmo, and Unholy Toledo. It's good to see all of you in the chat room this morning. If you're not listening in the chat room, you can follow me live on Facebook uh, under StreamYard. I should be on there now. And uh, you can ask questions on the, in the chat room, you can ask questions on StreamYard, whichever you would like to do. We're going to talk a little fantasy and good morning, everyone. Let's see. Andrea said good morning. Jack said good morning. You know I'm looking. So if you have any fantasy football questions, that's what we're going to talk about this morning for just a few minutes as I spend most some of your morning with you. Thank you for letting me come into your home and or car, wherever you may be and enjoying a few minutes of chat with you today. This is fun. So let's talk about that game tonight. It's going to be the kickoff to week 10. I've talked to you this year about my 14-team league, fantasy football league that I'm in. It is uh, probably, good morning, Linwood Price. It was probably uh, one of the most uh, difficult leagues I have ever been in, football or Otherwise, I made a trade yesterday. I made a trade. Do you want to hear about it? You're going to hear about it whether you want to or not. But this is a league where I started the year 0-2. I lost one game by two points. That game, I lost three players to injury all in the same game. Uh, Kind of bumming on that one still. And then in week two, I lost by five points. Since week two, I have not lost. And now I'm sitting at 7-2. and And in first place in my league, uh, my quarterback is Russell Wilson. Uh, most of you know Russell Wilson, Linwood Price, watching on StreamYard on Facebook. He's really weird of well, him. Uh, Wolfpack, great, huh? Uh, Keenan Allen, Will Fuller, James Conner, Josh Jacobs. I picked up Austin Hooper from Cleveland because my tight end, George Kittle, is on the injured reserve. I added some running backs, I added Leonard Fournette, I added Antonio Brown, but yesterday, yesterday, before we started talking about the Colts and the Titans tonight, I offered a trade. Linwood gave me the thumbs up because I'm talking about the one, only, the great quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, that would have to be Russell Wilson, Wolfpack extraordinaire. But yesterday a trade was made, and here was the offer. This went back and forth. In in our league, we can trade draft picks. Um, And so you try not to do that, but sometimes (laughs) necessity calls, right? You have to do what you have to do. So I I am enamored with DK Metcalf uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, he is a specimen of a wide receiver, unknown, unlike any other. And secondly, I already have Russell Wilson, his quarterback. Um, so I've been trying to get DK. He's on a team who is 2-7 and seven now. 
The owner of the 2-7 and seven team has been very active. He doesn't quit. He lost his first seven games. He's just the opposite of me. He lost his first seven. He won his last two. I lost my first two. I won my last seven. He's in 13th place. Uh, only eight teams make it. Uh, last year, I finished 6-7. and seven, Did not make the playoffs. It's difficult to make the playoffs in this league with a losing record. I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, but yesterday, I made a trade offer. And here's how it finally went down. Uh, I traded away McKinnon, running back for the 49ers. I traded away Justin Herbert, rookie quarterback sensation from the Los Angeles Chargers, and my next year second-round pick. Now, this is a league where we have a keeper and a first-rounder, so I'll have two picks. I'll lose my third pick, basically. What I received in return was his eight-round pick, Ben Roethlisberger, and I know he's waiting around for a COVID test, but I needed a backup quarterback. And in this league, there are none left. And DK Metcalf. So now I have DK Metcalf at one wide receiver. I have Keenan Allen at the other wide receiver. I moved Will Fuller, who is the number one receiver for Houston, to my flex position. Connor and Jacobs are my running backs. Hooper is my tight end on my bench. Now Fournette, uh, A.B., Antonio Brown, Jordan Reed, Giovanni Bernard. I'd like to keep a Tar Heel on there too, Linwood. Uh, Jordan Wilkins, Ballage for the Chargers, probably going to get cut. Matt Breida, Ben Roethlisberger, and on my injured reserve, George Kittle. So that's my team. I go into week 10 tonight with my kicker, which is my lead into the game. Here we go. Uh, my kicker on my team is Rodrigo Blankenship of the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts play the Tennessee Titans tonight. It's the kickoff to week 10. The game starts at 8.20. It's going to be played in Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. It's on Fox and the NFL Network. No, I don't have Lockett. Uh, Brandy Vickery has Lockett, and uh, Brandy's in the race for the championship, I guess, so don't see him trading me Lockett. Don't know what I would have to give up to even get Lockett, but I'm done trading draft picks, I can tell you that. Um, tonight, look, I think the Colts will win. Uh, that's an upset. The Titans are 6-2. and two, The Colts are 5-3. and three, and, and there's a reason why I believe that. First of all, you look at what Tennessee brings to the table in the form of their running back, Derrick Henry. Well, last week, Derrick Henry only gained 68 yards rushing, no touchdowns. It was a bad week in fantasy for Derrick Henry. I offered the Derrick Henry owner a trade. He turned it down repeatedly. You know, Henry has a great schedule, but if he doesn't score a touchdown, he is sort of touchdown dependent. And now teams are starting to focus on him. And the linebackers of the Indianapolis Colts, they are fast, quick to the ball. And even though he only had a 68-yard day last week, look, Indy doesn't give up over 50 yards a game rushing. I just don't see Derrick Henry having a big game tonight. We shall see. Okay. Um, he got stuffed against Pittsburgh the week before that, stuffed against Chicago. They have good run defenses. So does Indy. I just see this week, I'm not saying he's not a bad fantasy player. I'm just saying this week, I don't see Indy, or excuse me, Derrick Henry running wild against the Indianapolis defense. I think this will be a low scoring game. Um, I think the Titans, who have failed to get 300 yards in total offense the two of the last three weeks, will continue. I think the Colts have in quarterback Phillip Rivers, an experienced quarterback who will spread it around. Last week, Rivers threw the ball to 12 different receivers. 12. And I know there's been a lot of controversy about the running back position in Indianapolis. But look, they're getting the job done. So I'm going out and predicting the score here we go. Uh, let's see. Indy 17, the Titans 13. That's where I think it's going. And with that, the AFC South would be in a deadlock at 6-3. And, and if you look at that AFC division, right now there are nine viable playoff teams fighting for seven or eight slots. Now, they've talked about going to eight teams, but there are nine teams 
with three losses or less in that division. And I just think anyone in the AFC is viable. You take a look at individual games, okay? Take a look at that Raider Chief game a couple weeks ago in Kansas City. So if you are a Kansas City fan, which I am not, and you say, well, Kansas City is the cream of the crop in the AFC, but they lost to Oakland, or excuse me, Las Vegas. I do that sometimes. The Raiders, at the same time, they can lose to another team. It's a week-to-week process. The Steelers are a great example. They're, look, undefeated. 8-0. But last week, struggled with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are not that good. But on a given week in the NFL, you never know what's going to happen. The Cowboys exceeded expectations last week. They're on a bye week this week. They let it all go. Pittsburgh, now they play Cincinnati this week. Joe Burrow, the question there is, will Mixon play? Look, Mixon's got a bad foot. And we can talk about injuries to running backs. They have shoulder injuries. They have hamstrings. But here's one thing for sure. If you're a running back on a bad foot, you're not going to run the ball. And so Mixon went through very limited practice yesterday. Giovanni Bernard may well start this week. And if he doesn't, and Mixon does, I can still see a splitting of the duty I don't think you go Joe Mixon or Giovanni this week as a starter because that position is so in flux. It's much like Seattle. And if you listen to other fantasy shows, I'm going to give you some information that you don't hear everywhere else. You ready? You know, a lot of fantasy football shows talk about what we have this week. Well, something I haven't heard a lot of, and I'm a little disappointed in the powers that be, but I haven't heard a lot about Rashad Penny. Now, Chris Carson has a bad foot similar to Joe Mixon. But Rashad Penny, remember, last year in two games, he had 236 yards, three touchdowns against two very good defenses, and then he injured, he tore his ACL. Out. Hasn't played at all this year. But reports are out of SB Nation, I read this preparing for the show today, he is almost back. And his return, you talk about being needed. Rashad Penny posted on Twitter on November 10th. That was two days ago. Home stretch. Thank you, God. And then he also posted the same day, 20 minutes later. Sometimes you have to take two steps back to take 10 forward. It's a significant development for Penny to hype his own rehab and at the very least, encouraging to see him talk about coming back so soon. Seattle backfield is a mess right now. That injury to Carson is not a week-to-week. It's a month-to-month, that foot injury. The same kind of thing with Joe Mixon. So if you own Giovanni Bernard, if you own Rashad Penny, now, there's no report about him being activated, but I do know this. Because he's been on the IR since the beginning of the year, If he's not activated prior to week 11, he has to sit out the entire year. We're now in week 10. So the Seahawks have a decision to make between now and the end of next week whether they activate Penny or not. So I'm not saying you should add Penny in fantasy. I'm saying you simply should be alert to notices, updates, and reports about his injury. Because if Penny comes back, in my opinion, watching them all play, Penny is the best option for Seattle at the running back position. So we'll see how that pans out. Just a little nugget today as we get ready for Thursday night football and our fantasy week. So, again, let's just go through a few maybe obscure free agents. Uh, Here's one, Troy Mann Pope. For the Chargers, he had a full practice yesterday. He received a massive workload in week eight. He had 10 carries for 67 yards, five catches for 28, had a head injury. He seemed to be the hot hand ahead of the other running backs. I would not be surprised if Troy...